Lessing's Fables by Gotthold Ephraim Lessing. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Ape and the Fox Name to me an animal, though never so skillful, that I cannot imitate. So bragged the ape to the fox. But the fox replied, and do thou name me an animal so humble as to think of imitating thee writers of my country need i explain myself more fully the eagle and the fox be not so proud of thy flight said the fox to the eagle thou mountest so high into the air for no other purpose but to look farther about thee for carrion so have i known men who became deep-thinking philosophers not from love of truth but for the sake of lucrative offices of instruction the swallow believe me my friends the great world is not for the philosopher is not for the poet their real value is not appreciated there and often alas they are weak enough to exchange it for a far inferior one in the earliest times the swallow was as tuneful and melodious a bird as the nightingale but she soon grew tired of living in the solitary bushes heard and admired by no one but the industrious countryman and the innocent shepherdess she forsook her humbler friend and moved into the city what followed because the people of the city had no time to listen to her diving song she gradually forgot it and learned instead thereof to build the peacocks and the crow a vain crow adorned herself with the feathers of the richly tinted peacocks which they had shed and when she thought herself sufficiently tricked out mixed boldly with these splendid birds of juno she was recognized and quickly the peacocks fell upon her with sharp bills to pluck from her the lying bravery cease now she cried at length you have your own again but the peacocks who had observed some of the crow's own shining wing feathers replied be still miserable fool these too cannot be yours and they continued to peck the wasps corruption had befallen the noble structure of a war-horse which had been shot beneath his rider ever-working nature employs the runes of one being for the life of another and so a swarm of young wasps arose from the carrion oh cried the wasps how divine is our origin the magnificent horse the favorite of neptune is our progenitor the observant fabulist heard this strange boast and it reminded him of the modern italians whose conceit it is that they are nothing less than descendants of the old immortal romans because they were born among their graves the wolf on his deathbed the wolf lay at the last gasp and cast a searching look on his past life it is true i am a sinner he said but i trust not one of the worst i have been guilty of some wrong acts but i have also done many good ones i remember how once a bleeding lamb that had strayed from the flock came so near to me that i might have throttled it but i did not harm it at the same time i heard with the most astonishing indifference the mocking taunts of the sheep although i had nothing to fear from the protecting dogs i can testify to all that said his friend the fox who was helping him prepare for death i remember all the circumstances of the case it was when you were choking so horribly on that bone which afterward the good-natured crane extracted from your throat the blind hen a hen which had become blind being accustomed to scratch for food continued the operation after the loss of her sight what did it avail the industrious fool another hen who had the use of her eyes and wished to spare her tender feet kept close to her side and had all the benefit of the scratching as often as the blind hen turned up a corn the seeing one devoured it 
the industrious german collects the materials which the witty frenchman uses end of blessings fables by gotthold ephraim lessing